Welcome back to Task and Purpose. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. America's infantry modernization program is out of control. Last month, the US Army released footage from Project Convergence, a massive training exercise where they showcased how the next generation digitized grunt will fight. Troops utilize the IVAS helmet-mounted heads-up display goggles that shows the operator an augmented reality view of GPS maps. It's wirelessly connected to your weapon, so it displays reticle targeting information straight from your gun to your face. Yes, that looks incredibly comfortable to wear and not in the least bit annoying, huh? Russia with their Ratnik program and China with their Mars 3.0 modernization effort have been desperately trying to copy this same concept. But our adversary's military industrial complex isn't set up to successfully do so, and let's find out why. Soldiers now deploy with the Android Tactical Assault Kit it's a smartphone-like device attached to your chest rig. And finally, gives you the ability to send that perfect jiffy to your squad leader. However, a lot of people don't realize all of these technologies and concepts come from a long, troubled development history with multiple different failed programs that were plagued with all kinds of technological and political problems over the past 30 years. But China's not gonna be able to just skip all those years of lessons learned and trial and error. If you wanna understand the ins and outs of how the American military industrial complex and procurement system work, and why it's the least worst one in the world, then Land Warrior is the program to study. The roots of these technologies can be traced in its earliest form to 1989, with one brilliant research analyst named James Schoening at the US Army's Communications Electronics Command Research Development and Engineering Center in New Jersey. At only 35 years old, Schoening connected the dots and envisioned a combination of new technologies. What if there was a way to send satellite global positioning information directly to this new LED display technology, it would allow infantry to know exactly where they are on a map for the first time ever. They called it the soldier's computer. Little did they know that a version of it would one day go on to be tested in actual combat in a war that had yet to begin. For displaying the information visually, they made use of the commercial reflection technologies private eye display from 1989. It used a low power 0.5 watt vibrating mirror and 280 red LED to create a virtual two inch display. This was actually the same technology used for Nintendo's infamous failed Virtual Boy gaming system. But Schoening's initial army demonstration was a huge success to congressmen and senior army leaders who saw the future potential for the crude prototype. The project was then elevated to the US Army's Natick Soldier Center. Established in 1942 as a quartermaster research facility, Natick's 48-acre location in Massachusetts has grown to over 1,900 engineers and is in charge of research and development for all new soldier systems. They're like James Bond's Q if he needed better MREs. NATAC Soldier Center chose to incorporate the soldier's computer into an existing prototype. They were already in the middle of testing the soldier integrated prototype ensemble advanced technology demonstration. For Shoning, this was like getting picked up to play in the major leagues. The budget was upgraded to a modest $500,000 for the demo. A lot was at stake here. The Department of Defense would decide whether to invest billions into the project or cancel it outright. But I would argue the biggest evolution for your average soldier to happen since the invention of the radio is these commercial off-the-shelf drones. I wanted to test one out in the field for myself. I was curious about the payload delivery feature. Drone Clone Experts was kind enough to send us one of their upgraded, top-rated, limitless 4S edition drones for our experiment that we're gonna run today. If you like what you see during this test and you wanna try one out yourself, click the link in the description to get 20% off your order. The payload delivery feature can drop a water bottle sized object with the press of a button. You'd see where this would be useful, right? For delivering supplies to troops if you're dug into a defensive position and you don't wanna get up and run supplies exposing yourself. I can say it's military grade durable and easy to use. This would work even if your buddies are in a remote outpost because the Limitless 4S drone has a battery life of 30 minutes and a flight range of four miles. For instance, it has obstacle avoidance sensors that make it impossible to crash even for me. You could record your patrol or mission. It's got this upgraded Sony 4K Ultra HD camera. The LED spotlight feature makes it easy to land even at night. Drone Clone Experts has hundreds of five-star reviews on Amazon. It's one of the top ranked drones on and off the site. You can purchase the Limitless 4S to run your own tactical experiments by clicking the link in the description to get 20% off your order directly from their site. Even for the most experienced flyers, they're gonna be on their toes with excitement. Find out 
out what it feels like to experience the world from above. Fly your own drone today. So between September and November of 1992, the soldier's computer was field tested by troops at Fort Benning, Georgia. They were blown away by the new, never before seen thermal weapon site and its ability to clearly see targets over one kilometer away. When the capability was combined with a video feed through their eye display, they could shoot from behind cover while only exposing their arms. It was all of these systems networked together that gave exponential abilities to soldiers who tested it. But there was one major problem. The heads-up display was a major weak link. Its ability to capture and send video images was delayed by 75 seconds and would sometimes crash the whole system. This after action report includes overly honest opinions directly from the grunts who tested it. Backpack should be eliminated. My back and legs still hurt. What they need to do is have the goggles that can be worn as needed. Junk basically sucks. Heads up is the most useless thing I've ever seen. Stinks. The computer and GPS was the size of a backpack and weighed 18 pounds. Add an additional eight pounds for the heads up display and another 15 pounds for the high voltage battery supply for a total of 41 pounds. Imagine it's like carrying five Maltese dogs around on your back everywhere you go in combat. I think the technology is undeniable. It's coming in some form or another. It's clear as we're going through some of the testing of the system, it's still in the, its infancy stages and there's some problems with it. I don't know who ever put it on a soldier's back the original configuration and had them walk around with it because it appeared to me designed in a vacuum um, as in, well, we need all these things to make the system run, but we don't look at, we need all these things to make the system run on the back of a soldier who's, you know, walking a street, hopping a wall, going through a door or coming out of a hatch. Despite the criticisms, the Pentagon liked what they saw. And in January, 1996, the project would once again be elevated and become one of the main major modernization efforts led by the Department of Defense called the Land Warrior Program. Now the project was assigned what's called a TRADOC Capability Manager Soldier named Colonel Ernie Forrest. This guy was a real seasoned grunt with 36 years experience through the chain of command from infantry platoon leader through infantry brigade leader. TCM soldier Colonel Forrest's job was to be the honest broker between the warfighter and the design engineers in the lab. This is part of the secret sauce of what makes America's procurement strategy so effective. According to two government accountability reports, Land Warrior in 1996 was originally supposed to cost $1.4 billion for 34,000 units. That estimate would increase to $2 billion by 1999. The report found the program had insufficient oversight and the technologies were immature and far from as ready as the engineers had claimed. The equipment failed in the rain and had electromagnetic interference problems. Even in the face of these issues, the Army continued dumping millions of dollars on Land Warrior for one really interesting reason. Land Warrior fit perfectly into major changes happening at the top levels of the Army at the time. In 1996, the concept of network-centric warfare was introduced by Admiral William Owens, winning over top Army planners that GPS-connected units was the future. I want to play a clip for you that I found from 1995, where the Admiral literally predicts the future of warfare and how useful Land Warrior will be. But I genuinely believe in the next five years there will be a revolution in the way this nation fights wars. And it will come primarily from the smart front end of war fighting. That is the ability to use uh, high technology surveillance of a very large battlefield, a battlefield perhaps the size of North Korea or Iraq. And with the ability to see that battlefield 24 hours a day, real time, all weather. We have never in the history of war fighting ever seen the battlefield that way. And being able to relay that information real time to a warrior on a battlefield. Uh, there are, if you can fuse those sensors in a way that uh, they are understandable and bring that information to a warrior, then the nature of war, I believe, will change. If you see that battlefield, like I described, and the enemy does not, and if you have dominant battlefield awareness, you win. So Land Warrior happened to fit perfectly into this new vision that the Army had for a force half the size but twice as well equipped. In 2003, the invasion of Iraq began and changed the course of Land Warrior forever. In 2005, the 4th Battalion, 9th Infantry Regiment out of Fort Lewis, Washington, were equipped with the newly designed General Dynamics Land Warrior system. 
Lieutenant Colonel Pryor said that he would have 229 of his own soldiers equipped with Land Warrior during their 15 month long deployment to Iraq in 2007. Land Warrior is an excellent tool that we use for every mission every day. We've conducted hundreds of missions since combat operations began for us in early May here of 2007, including numerous raids, poured on its searches. But it had been 18 years since the program had begun at this point, and costs were now estimated at $3 billion. Congress had lost their patience, and so too had the newly appointed oversight officer, forced Congress to officially cancel the Land Warrior program. It looked like the end of the digitized soldier. But it turned out the Land Warrior was extremely popular with those troops who had just deployed to combat in Iraq with it. Its ability to leave digital quote unquote chemtrails to mark safe regrouping points on a map helped save lives and eliminate friendly fire. In response to this soldier feedback, Congress then quickly reinstated the budget for Land Warrior. So Land Warrior was renamed to the Ground Soldier Systems, and then again renamed to Net Warrior in June 2010 to further distance itself from the past. Net Warrior completely reimagined the project by dropping the 10 pound system for a tiny handheld phone that would do the same thing with a handheld solution that integrated a commercial off the shelf Android phone. This is the point where I believe technology had finally matured to the point that made digital grunt dream an obtainable reality. In 2017, NetWarrior would now have the ability to receive full motion video streams and could control and monitor small unmanned ground vehicles and UAV drones on the network like analyst James Schoening had originally envisioned in 1989. It might seem weird to you that troops still don't even have the same kind of abilities that we have with our own personal smartphones and we've had for years. But we forget that these phones only work because of a multi-billion dollar bandwidth and tower infrastructure already set up around the country, which doesn't work once you leave the US. You can't knock on the enemy's door and ask them for their Wi-Fi password. Trust me, I've tried it and it was awkward for everyone. In 2021, Microsoft won a contract worth up to $22.8 billion to produce 120,000 IVAS hollow lenses. It's enough to equip the entire infantry fighting force. The plan in 2022 was to field between five and 10,000 of those to soldiers before Congress pulled the plug on the funding until the army could show that it actually worked. That sounds familiar. The debate still rages on about whether or not your regular grunt needs fancy high-tech displays like a F-35 pilot does or an M1 Abrams gunner, or if it will be too complicated and distract in the heat of frantic close quarters combat. Many of the lessons learned about oversight and soldier feedback that should come from the ground up instead of the top down have stuck with the defense industry ever since. And I believe the soldiers who ran these programs for the past 20 years are a huge reason why the American defense industry produces much better equipment than many of our adversaries. And remember to get 20% off your Limitless 4S UAV drone by clicking the link in the description if you wanna get a gift that will guarantee a smile on someone's face.